Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back. It is episode four of season two of Cobra Kai here on AfterBuzz TV. Who is this mysterious new Tori character? And is it ethical to stage a fight at a beach club to sell karate dojo signups? I don't know. We're going to find out in just one second. We'll see you guys in just a second. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. All right. Back on it, guys. We Efficient are. conversation Woo. about Cobra Kai. Just knocking <laughs> them right. out. Back one to by, back to back. One by one here. Yeah, but uh, this was a good one. Things are starting to get real in this episode. Yes. Yeah, a lot more head-to-head -head competition, which I'm glad we talked about last episode. Of it. it finally got to that of like actually seeing fighting, seeing them out in public, not just in their separate dojos. Right, yeah, because Miyagi-Do is about defense. No one, no one cares. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cares. Uh, <laughs> Except for this team, I got Michael Class on the end of the table. What hey, is good. up, everyone? Thank you for joining us at the Only MC. Tammy Goya. Hey, everyone. How are you? And I am Ben Bateman. Uh, it's weird to introduce ourselves every 20 minutes, but, <laughs> well, uh, you know, here we are. So, um, All right. What's going on in this episode? Uh, the first thing to talk about is that Daniel and Miyagi, you know, they, they have to find a way to sell this dojo, and they can't figure it out right now because nobody cares about defense. So the conversation, do we pick a fight in public? Do we, like start a confrontation somehow yeah and he he, he has, says like oh it almost sounds like he's like i almost have like a foolproof plan yeah which you trust him because he's a salesman i mean exactly. they specifically set him up that way he is selling this entire season yeah trying to sell not only miyagi Do but just that way of life of having defense be first and so you want to believe him and then i almost was like wait but this is it <laughs> i was like are you gonna go to the beach are you gonna go to the kids and he chooses to go to the parents yeah. Smart decision? Well, thing, here's the thing I loved about it. He decides <laughs> to go to the parents, and you're like, okay, you know, money, and and like, and like, he's got some some status, and he knows all these parents. Exactly. But it doesn't work. I know. Because parents used to be kids. So they see the video, and they're like, this is awesome. This this video, and, and he's like, did you see the demonstration? She's like, got it on my phone. I was like, <laughs> love and, it. And that actress, <laughs> that actress that walked over, who 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 showed yeah. him the video. Yeah. She was from another show, Facts of Life. Oh, I think was she, she played Trudy. Oh, really? Yes, yes. Like, oh my gosh. Ah, so that was kind of cool. Great cameo. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I just I just love that, that like, uh, you know, because it feels like cheating almost. Like he has access to like all these people with money and uh, and he can talk to the parents yeah. and like Sam's like, are you sure you really want to do this? And he's like, trust me, it'll work. And you're like, you're well, lame, bro. <laughs> Cobra Kai. I'm a Cobra Kai. <laughs> well, especially after like uh, we're in the age, age and situation right now with the whole Lori Laughlin USC thing where yeah. like to be able to buy your way into something, yes. to be able to use your money as an influence even more so. Obviously, when they were filming this, they never thought of that. Yeah. And we're all watching and being like, Oh, uh, really? You're buying your way into things? You're one of those people? Yep. yep. And it definitely it's... has an impact on what your thoughts are watching it. Totally. So while he's looking for uh, new students at the Beach Club, he runs into our new student, Tori, one of the new Ooh, recruits. Yes. Yeah. Um, sassy Tori. Now, uh, uh, the actress's name is Peyton List. Is that yes, correct? correct? She's from the Disney Channel, I think. I think she's originally famous from a Disney show. So this is like kind of a breakout, uh, cool, different situation to yeah. see her in. But she obviously has her eye on Miguel right away and she's a badass yes yeah you know she, yeah. she she and miguel get into it they start sparring i was very happy to see an introduction of another main character yeah because i think it, we were all obviously as invested as we have been in all the other characters it's still like okay anything anything oh whoa yes okay what's this storyline obviously yeah. you're impacting miguel is that going to have an impact on sam is that going to have an impact on cobra kai yep i think that it definitely add it threw a wrench in there which was good yeah it's a beautiful layering um, now, I know that characters have arcs. Do you hate Dimitri as much as I do <laughs> as a character? <laughs> that is so funny that you said that because my husband's watching the episodes with me yeah. and he can't stand Dimitri. Mm. Uh, you're supposed to be annoyed by him, obviously, because he's yes. supposed to have an arc. But it's still just like sometimes when characters like this show up and they just keep going back to the well with the same thing over and over again. I'm like, I would beat this kid up. I don't even <laughs> want to beat anybody up. He is the kid who is the the person at the end of the bench who you're picking teams and you're like, oh, who we? Oh, he's and I have the last pick and he's oh, well. All right, I'm stuck with it. You're oh. stuck with him. The worst. And so you're watching this and you're like, no, 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 stay at Cobra Kai. No, no, and the Cobra Kai people are like, no, 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 get over to me. <laughs> I couldn't get too annoyed with him because I knew there was going to be an arc. Of course. I knew, th I knew there was going to come that moment where he and Hawk were going to have yep. th that confrontation. Yep. So I just kind of bit my tongue. I was like, okay, I can get through this. His whining. 
Yeah, now, to be completely fair and honest with you guys, I was more like Dimitri than any of the characters growing up. I'm dead serious. Ben. Really? I, I was a gigantic nerd, and I was, like, socially awkward, yeah. and I was, like, too clever for my own good. Like, yep. I, like I have 6,000 comic books in my, mom, in my mom's basement. I was chubby, I had a bowl cut. I mean, I was absolutely a dork and like <laughs> got made fun of and stuff. So I was I can totally relate yeah. to this kid. And even the way he talks, his like know it all thing yes. that he like does to sort of protect himself. Yeah. Like he wants to be the smartest. That was me. So like I get this kid, but good lord, if I was that obnoxious, <laughs> I can't believe I didn't get thrown into lockers. It, it'd be interesting to look where he would be in thirty years. Mm. Yeah. Like what is his job in thirty years? Because he's clearly probably gonna be really smart. Yeah. He's probably gonna have a lot of money. And now he's gonna be like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now all you who are hating on me who are saying all these yes. things yeah well he's you know he's joining miyagi the peaceful way maybe he'll uh, own you know car dealerships or something. <laughs> i don't know i can totally see him doing that um so he enters the dojo because he's like you know i've been thinking about joining for a long time uh after after he sees hawk at the beach and he like tries to like lean on the idea that you know he's a cobra kai mm -hmm. and he's not because he never joined yep. and hawk is pissed like they they've been brewing this for a while yeah. now there are mm -hmm. the two of them mm -hmm. and their confrontation um, and he decides to go to the dojo and like his scene with crease now sometimes I talk about TV writing where I'm like it's a little too much other times TV writing is too much in the right way like this was exactly that because yep. it has to be when you want he, it to be when he touched crease oh you're just like <laughs> you're like this is not actually real that this would ever happen because like <laughs> there's so people aren't that senseless but mm -hmm. for this it's exactly what I want you need to put he needs because you need to heighten and so they just keep heightening and that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're on it. You're like, oh, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh, and you're yeah, like backing yeah. away. You can't back up no more. You're in a cup, but you're like... And the line about the about the, the snake, and he's like, the eyes are actually anatomically incorrect. <laughs> and I'm glad they didn't show Crease hitting him, because yeah. it was much more effective to have Dimitri walk out yeah. of the dojo with the bloody nose. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. again, like the whole the whole idea of like the 80s and karate and like an adult hitting a child, like back then, I mean, there's stuff in 80s movies that's just outright like illegal yeah, <laughs> movie shoots. Oh, yeah. there's scenes in like classics, like Revenge of the Nerds, where you're just like, you can't, this can't be <laughs> no. in a movie. Couldn't make this anymore. Yeah. This is not right. Uh, so like the idea that Kreese would strike a child, yep. like break his nose basically, yeah. you're like, that's 100% what John Kreese yeah. would do. And this is exactly how a kid in 2019 <laughs> would react. It's, it's, again, getting back to, uh, we talked in episode three about the, this breaking of the PC culture and yeah. not having it be that way. I uh, it just I look at this and I'm like, what what conversations went on at YouTube of like, can we put this out? Are we, uh, are we promoting this of kind of getting away from the PC and actually having this Dimitri needed this. Yeah. I thought the exact same like, thing. As much as we all are like, oh, you can't really hit a kid like that. Dimitri needed to get smacked upside the head. Yeah. He, in some way. In I, some, I don't know probably if not getting, that much. I don't know if his nose getting, getting a bloody nose is, but, you know. Um, so, on the other side of Kreese, though, you know, Kreese is really trying to, to work his way into the dojo and, and mm -hmm. earn back Johnny's trust. And he's been telling all these stories about... You know the Delta Boys and the Noriega, yes. and, I was in, and Rwanda and Somalia, and like, uh, and just like the stories he's telling, it, and you're like, they they all, I think it's smart because him coming back as a character and the stories he was telling, he did sound a little bit too much like a fantastical '80s villain, right? He was saying stuff that you were just like, there's no way, like you. The, <laughs> You took a character like a, like a legendary character from the '80s, and you just try to like make him modern. And like the yeah. reality, what he actually went through in the last 30 years is important if you're going to believe the character, right. and believe the mm -hmm. story. Otherwise, it's kind of hollow. And so it's good when Miguel calls him out. You start asking the same questions, which mm -hmm. then leads to the scene where he's been living in this in, in this vet home. Yeah. yeah. So did you feel sorry for him? For a minute. Yeah. I actually did some humanity. Yeah. To John Kreese. I was surprised by that, by by the way I reacted to that, and by that storyline. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I definitely, it, it, I've always wanted to see more of Kreese and yeah. see more of the backstory and where have you been and what have you been doing. Uh, and I think this definitely, it, it made you feel sorry for him. Yeah. yeah. It definitely gave you a new side of like, oh, now you want, before where everyone was like, why is Johnny giving him a second chance? Now you know. Yeah. Now you're on that side. I almost didn't want to see that though because I like hating him. Yeah, of course. I mean, he's a good I think you can Don't still. I think you can still hate him, him though. I, I think you can still, you're still on edge. You're not full, you're not 100% on Team Kreese. Yeah. I still I still don't think he's the biggest villain of the show. And I mentioned it last episode, mm. but we'll get to it more as the show goes on. Um, so 
but but so uh, the last the last point to talk about on that is that you know Johnny decides to give Kreese this shot at mm. redemption, mm -hmm. and I think it's interesting when he says the line, I "Milled around living in places like this for the last ten years." Then I heard that Cobra Kai won All Valley, and it gave me hope. And it's like, in some ways, that's hard to believe. What were you doing for ten years? That this would be a, like a like a local Valley Karate tournament? Would you, like where'd you even hear about it? You're like sixty yeah. something in this show mm -hmm. or whatever. Like, are you scanning Twitter? Like, are you on Facebook <laughs> with these people? Or did you just like see a flyer? Like, where'd you hear about it? But then you start to think about in life. You see, you have a job or a routine or a lifestyle or whatever. You can kind of get locked into it. You can get into a rut. Yeah. Years can pass, and you know that's kind of that area was his home, give or take, for a while. Mm -hmm. So he probably was passing through, and he heard some rumbling of it. Like, yeah, someone mentioned Cobra Kai, and he yes. was like, "Oh yeah, you mean the old Cobra Kai?" And they're like, "No, there's a new Cobra Kai. They just won." Yeah, at a bar or something. Yeah. Who knows? Like, I so I was like, okay, that's that's interesting. Um, one of the things I did really like, I think I wrote the line down here, is he's telling the story, and he says. He's telling the story, and he says, um, "Then I got old. I feel like a broken man." Mm. Mm. I thought that line that line really resonated with me because it was like, "You were like a badass. You were like a badass in the '80s. You were like the most intimidating David Hasselhoff looking, yeah. just like square jawed, <laughs> handsome, yeah. evil." And thirty years passed, and he's like, well, "You can't fight age." There was just a, there was a reality to that line that he said that was just like, "Got it." There's you can't. You wouldn't win a fight probably with Johnny at this point. He'd probably kick your ass. It's interesting, that broken man line, because yeah. he looks broken. Like Just the way Marty Cove carries that character physically, you can see he is broken on a lot of different levels. Definitely, definitely. And so then, you know, Johnny, I like Johnny giving him the pep talk. Um, you know, defeat does not exist in this dojo. Yes, Sensei. It was a yeah. great, great ending to that. So then now on the flip side of it, you've got LaRusso, and he's looking for new students. Mm -hmm. And he goes to this beach club, and we get this confrontation between Sam and Tori Woo! and Aisha and Robbie, and, you know, he's a former criminal or whatever. The guy yeah. tries to throw him out. We're all trying to sort of feel out what's going on here. But this is the beginning of the Sam Tory rivalry, rivalry, or or nemesis, or mm -hmm, yeah, whatever you want to call it. And it's funny because, like, I remember, like, I remember that moment where you on you're on the right side of it, and some other kid is doing something that like is not right. It's not the worst thing in the world, mm -hmm. but you're also like, that's not right. And like, I, we're in this cool place, and it's like my parents, and I don't want to get in trouble. Are you but talking about cool the kid. stealing of the vodka? Yeah, totally. Yeah. A stealing of a wallet is a little different, but like stealing of a bottle of vodka from the country club <laughs> is kind of like we've all been teenagers. I, I was just sitting there thinking, like, whose side would I be on if I was in this situation? I was that age. If I was that age, like, what kid was well, I? Well, and they set it up too of like how bad you have your scale of one to ten of how bad is Tori, and you're like, oh, you need immediately know that she comes into Cobra Kai. Okay, she's a two or a three. Okay, then she steals the vodka. Oh my goodness, bump up a couple points. Yeah, five or six. Oh my goodness! And you stole the wallet. Like you're way up, but then it's like oh, she didn't steal the wallet. Yeah, exactly. Did you guys think she did? Because I, I was in that. I moment. think she did initially. Yeah. I think I had a moment where I thought she did it, but then it became clear like no, she didn't. Yeah. And Aisha kind of bugged me. Yeah. She was like, you know what? The siding with Tori and like that bothered me. I really want Aisha and Sam to mend their friendship. Yeah. Yeah. But she's not coming through. I keep watching it and being like, what are you doing? Like you were a lifelong friend of Sam's, but then I'm like, oh, you're a kid. Right, your emotions yeah, change yeah. every ten minutes. Totally. So I, I don't. Bl I look at it, I'm like, what are you doing? You were friends with Sam for years. Why are you totally betraying? Oh, you sound like a well, dad. You, <laughs> who's the ten most? Minutes. Who's the most mature kid? Who's the smartest, most mature, like evolved kid? Sam. Maybe she's got Miguel. I think it's Miguel. Miguel. I think he has his moments. Like last last season, he like you know he hits Sam or he pushes her, he gets mm. drunk. I think he definitely has his moments where you're like, okay, you're definitely not there. But I think a lot of his moments, like his ability to interact with Johnny in a way that he's like providing help and guidance to this like tr like troubled adult, makes me feel like he's pretty well evolved. Robbie's pretty evolved too. I think Robbie's yeah. pretty mature. He's, he's Rob lived a lot of life. Robbie and Miguel are cultured. Yeah. And I think that is really where they have a leg up on Sam, where Sam has never faced hardship. Yeah. And where I, the other two have. I don't know if it's in this episode, but that moment where Miguel apologizes to Crease. Yeah. You, you know, circling back to who's the most mature, yep. that that was a real level yep. of maturity. Love Miguel. Big fan yeah. of that kid. I I'm, I'm, I buy like a, I buy into his story more and more as this goes on. Um, Are you surprised they, they have the fight, obviously, with the wallet? Yes. Uh, and um, Robbie tries to get it on camera. 
we are like, oh, he didn't get it on camera. He's getting his butt kicked. Oh, my goodness. There comes Daniel coming in and kicks their butt. We have it on video. Are you surprised that he didn't release the video? No. If he had released the video, then he would have been just using the same tactics. That, yeah. And that wouldn't have felt like – it wouldn't have felt uh, – Pat Morita, it wouldn't have felt Mr. Miyagi, just right. Like to me, it wouldn't have felt like Miyagi. Though. It would have been a weird turn for the show, and it, I think it would have already. You already see this like insecure, ego-driven underbelly of Daniel so often come up in his rivalry with Johnny. It comes up so much yeah. mm -hmm. that I think if he was to do something like that, you would really start to say he's maybe worse, or he's certainly no better. And because it's not like Johnny's really doing anything bad at this point. No, no. he's really honestly the hero of the show. And I think if Larusso was to have done that, then I I don't. Think I wanted him to release it yeah. just because I wanted him to get the students, but it would have felt so wrong. Yeah, so wrong. He has the moment where he sees the fisherman and he thinks it's Pat Morita. Yeah, and he walks over, and then the guy says, uh, "The guy says, uh, if you where is it? Oh, I wrote it down somewhere. Now I can't even find it." Uh, eventually, the fish will find you. Yeah. That's what he says. Yeah. It's a if big have, sea. It's a big ocean. If you have eventually, something to catch. If you're patient. Yep. Yeah. So I thought that was good. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, Robbie gets into this fight. He, it's. I, I wish. I kind of wish Robbie kicked those guys' asses. Also, I was surprised they didn't have him throw any punches or kicks. He just gets whacked with the Immediately oar. Immediately with the. Yeah. Yeah. There's also a lot of wallets to steal in a day. Like, why would they stash them? Unless they stole all of the wallets that day, wouldn't they get them out of the vicinity quickly? I think they stole them all that day. Wow, it's a lot of wallets. I Which, know. again, gives good flashback, because you're like, why are they yelling at Robbie? What did he do at the beach club? They're wanting to kick him out. Well, now we know. Stole a tremendous number yes. of wallets. Yeah. yeah, which is surprising that, like, he... Well, I guess you're young. Yeah, he wouldn't send a juvie for stealing wallets, yeah. probably. I don't know. Hard to say. Hard to say. Depends how many wallets, I guess. It's a lot of wallets. <laughs> it's a lot of wallets. <laughs> yeah, and at a Beats Club, those are not empty. Yeah, absolutely. So that's uh, that's kind of how that sequence wraps up. Mm -hmm. Obviously, um, you know, both sort of sides have now presented their point of view. You feel Kreese getting a little bit more of a stranglehold over Johnny. Um, at this point, are you trusting Kreese or not? No. I think I'm... I'm still at that 90-10. Still, like, 90% I want to root for him. 10% I'm like, something's going to happen. Yeah. He has a, he has a secondary agenda, and when can he carry it out? It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Hims, it was it was when he said, uh, it was when he said, yes, sensei, that I felt like he was up to something. Because I was like, this guy, no matter how broken, no matter how much he feels like he's aged out, He's still the same guy, and egos don't change that much. He's a and master he, manipulator. And to say yes, sensei, that's a manipulation move. That's like a straight mm. stroke your ego move. Yep. That's not like we can try this together. That's like I'm subservient to you, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't believe that. Yep. So uh, that was that was the thing that keyed me off is that he's still, you know, he's still not the not the right. I compare it to uh, uh, a sports reference, like when certain players get old in their sport, they used to rely on their physical gifts. And then as they get older, past 10 years in the league, 15 years in the league, you rely on your mental will right. to be able to mentally dominate opponents. Oh, yeah. Kobe, that, Kobe, Kobe, Kobe with pump did fakes. that all the time. Yeah. And you're trash talking them the right way or you you know more information using that mentally. That's exactly what John Grease yep. is doing. Yeah. Confidence. A level of confidence. So yep. though he's I, I do believe that he got old. I do believe he's broken. I just think that mm -hmm. he's. Always looking for that way to get back on top. Mm -hmm. So um, that's pretty much going to wrap up episode four. Uh, I think if we're answering the same question that we've been answering at the end of every episode, whose story are you the most invested in? I'm, I'm kind of starting to shift to Miguel at this point. I think I'm still with Johnny, but I'm beginning to shift to Miguel just a, a, just a little bit. I... Like at this point in the show, I just like, I really like that he confronts Crease like that. I like that he's got Johnny's back. It feels like if you're, we're not trusting Crease all the way, that Miguel is the key to maintaining what Cobra Kai is supposed to be about. He has the right lessons inside here. Mm -hmm. so. I'm, I'm on Team Tori. Oh. Uh, not on Team Tori, but I feel like I'm on Team Tori is the storyline I'm most interested in. Okay. Because, I mean, they brought her in as a firecracker. Yeah. She wasn't, like, introduced slowly. She's a good fighter. She was too. introduced yes, right away. So Great fighter. Part of Cobra Kai. You're stealing things. I'm interested to see where they take it. And I stepped into Team Sam. Okay. You yeah, like the Sam? This episode, this episode's like, I'm all about Sam. I want to see where this is going. Yeah, and when they brought Tori in, it's like, yes, this is going to be really good. So. Yeah, the girl, the, yeah. the girl fight yeah. aspect of it. 
um, which we'll talk about more later. But uh, that's going to wrap us up for episode four, guys. Stay tuned. we got episode five coming right up. Uh, if you want to follow along with what we're doing here at After Buzz TV, please click like, click subscribe. We are the ESPN of TV Talk, constantly providing free content for you guys, hundreds of hours every single week. And honestly, there's like 12 different YouTube channels, each that pertains to a different uh, specific level of interest. So there's superhero shows, reality TV shows, there's dramas. Um, obviously, there are red carpet events. Like we just did the Paley Center mm -hmm. interviews with the whole cast of Cobra Kai. You can find that all on the red carpet channel. So go subscribe, like, and give us a rating review on iTunes. It helps us stay high in the standings. Five stars preferably would be the coolest thing ever. <laughs> Michael Class, where can the folks find you? You can find me on Instagram and on Twitter at the only MC. And you can find me on Twitter at Tammy Govea and Insta Tammy Govea Official. You guys can find me at Ben Bateman Media on Twitter and Instagram. We'll be back shortly with episode five. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.